Welcome to the AME Food Testing Show. Today's topic, Salmonella, E. coli, Listeria, Yeast and Mold, FFA, POV, Aflatoxin in Almonds and Walnuts Production. Today's guest, Pamela Sweeten. She's contributed before. Her experience began with her own consulting firm in 2006 in the greater San Joaquin Valley in California. She provides her clients with marketing options for their almond crops. She also provides market conditions and industry data, and she assists her growers in a cloud-based record-keeping system called Scoring Ag. It's a database system that she offers. She previously worked with an almond company in Los Banos, California. She designed marketing plans. She maximized their returns. She developed sales forecast and product pricing. She also represented RPAC at industry events and meetings with clients and future crop options. Her professional education, California State University, Stanislaw, in 1988. She has contributed significantly to the Western Ag Processes Association as their Food Safety Committee member. She participates also in the American AgriWomen, California Agriculture Women, and other charities, including Ronald McDonald House, who's on the board of Central California Children's Hospital. And welcome with me, Pamela Sweeten. Pamela? Thank you, Andy, for having me on your show again today. I really appreciate this opportunity to share the knowledge and experience that i had in the past 20 years with the net industry and to share with your listeners as well. Well, Pamela, we've been looking forward to this interview for quite a while, and I know that our listeners will benefit from your vast experience. Let's begin. What are the bacterial contamination, contamination issues for almond and walnut producers? You know, I feel that the largest issue that probably all nut industry folks are facing is salmonella. Salmonella, of course, can be found not only in human um, feces, but also animal. So that's something that happens um, whether it's by water or by soil conditions, and that can affect any grower, any farmer, any producer at any level in the, in the process. So I would say salmonella is the largest bacterial contamination issue that faces the net industry. Let's chat for a minute. What are the other human pathogens of interest? Typically, we're looking at E. coli and listeria? Yes. Those would be the other, um, out of the three, I mean, those are the big three that people always think of, E. coli, salmonella, and listeria. And they do affect, and they have been found in various nets, whether it's peanuts or almonds, pistachios, or even your walnuts, you have um, had each of those occurrences occur. Very good. Now, with your particular experience with almonds and walnuts, is there a yeast and mold challenge? Absolutely. And yeast and mold can even begin as early as the field. Um, so being a very conscientious farmer, you're going to want to keep an eye on your crop as it's growing because that can begin even at the field level, depending on your zinc um, that maybe exists in your in your walnut orchards. And that's also something that's more prevalent in the walnut industry just because walnuts have a higher fat content. So that is an issue and concern that is heavily addressed in the walnut industry, yeast and mold and can be caused from growing or the handling conditions of the crop. It's very um, important to keep that crop at the temperature-controlled climate once it is harvested so that you will have, you'll mitigate your risks of, of developing the yeast or the mold. Very good. What is free fatty acid, FFA, in nut products? Well, free fatty acid is, an, is a scientific term, or the FFA, that as a consumer, maybe you know it as omega-3. Um, I know that's a real popular buzzword at the moment. Everyone wants to get omega-3s because they're good for you and they're healthy. And that is actually what you'll find in your walnuts. And walnuts are very high in, free, in F, um, FFA or omega-3s. 
And because of that, they also have the issue to deal with on the peroxide value or the POV, and the POV is what becomes rancid. I don't know if anyone's ever had a chocolate chip cookie and you take a bite and you get that horrible taste from a rancid walnut that you just bit into. There's nothing worse. Um, so I know that that this leads me into what you were going to ask as far as the peroxide value and what it is. But the rancidity, you know, that happens on the storage side. So as a consumer, if you're, if you're not involved directly in the nut industry and you're just a consumer buying nuts at the store, when you get them home, put them in the, in the refrigerator or the freezer. They'll keep fine, and you'll mitigate your own risks of having rancid nuts develop. That's an excellent suggestion. I've eaten nuts my whole life, and I've never thought about refrigerating them. I've always thought them as being shelf-stable. That's well, an excellent do, suggestion. Yeah, they do have a long shelf life, but if you can keep them at um, a temperature-controlled climate or in the refrigerator, that's even better. Great. What are the current methods to screen these products for these contamination issues? You know, there's several companies. I know when you put this question out there, I'm not in a laboratory, and I'm definitely hands-on and out in the field. So I did a little research, and I found that there are several companies that do have testing kits that exist for um, companies to have in their own laboratories, and they can get results back in as little as four minutes. So that was kind of cool to find out that, you know, they're readily available, inexpensive in the big scheme of things. There's nothing worse than, I would think, shipping out a load of walnuts to have them rejected because someone did the testing and they tested a box that had rancidity in that product. I mean, to ship those back to the point of origin or to try and dispose of them in another country. So obviously it's very important that producers and processors, when they are getting ready to ship their product, that they do make sure they have a great product to send out to the consumer. So it was great to find out that they're readily available, um, easy access to these kits, to do this testing in their facilities. Very good. Are there government standards that help food producers in these markets to guide them on these issues? Absolutely. Um, the USDA, United States Department of Food and Ag, absolutely has standards for all nuts, not just almonds, but they also have the standards for peanuts, pistachios, pecans, pine nuts, macadamians, hazel nuts, brazil nuts, and walnuts. And USDA, even though we don't grow all of these in the United States, they do have a standard. Um, so it's very important um, for the processor to be able to use those standards so that they don't ship out product that doesn't fall within those parameters. But there are definitely government standards. And, you know, Australia grows a lot of these same nuts that we do here in the United States, Spain, Portugal. So they also have their standards. And I would, I'm assuming, which I know that's not always the best thing to do, but just because we do import from other countries these products, I'm assuming that all the governments um, probably have similar standard requirements just so that the product can cross country you know, travel to various countries and not have issues. I'm sure they've got very similar standards. Very good. Pamela, in your expertise, what do you see as far as new methods to detect for these items on the horizon? The almond industry, which of course I'm very familiar with, um, actually several years ago put into place a standard of all nuts having a pasteurization or a kill step. And that means that there would not be nuts sold in North America, so Mexico, Canada, and, and the United States that had not been treated. And that was to mitigate any risks of someone getting sick from eating almonds. I had actually been in the industry long enough to go through two different recalls with various companies that have had to deal with this. And they were able to trace it all the way back to the field um, as far as where the product came from. And that's very unusual because a lot of um, growers aren't able or processors aren't able to do that. 
But some of the methods that they use in the almond industry and also within walnuts or peanuts or pecans is a company called Napasol, and it's actually using a process that would, it's used for low moisture foods, obviously, um, and Napasol actually is able to do a pasteurization kill step on products so that you're not sending out nuts or products that have pathogens, which would, you know, which would, have, you know, be harmful to the consumer. So it's able to actually kill those microorganisms and send out a safe, healthy product. So other things that are done in the industry are a fumigant. Um, propylene oxide is widely used. But, of course, it's limited as far as exports, and exports don't have to have a kill step done to them. But anything in North America does have to have a kill step. So roasting or drying the nuts would also be a kill step or using them in a bakery product that would be baked. So there's also a steam process that's used. And that's kind of interesting to see the steam, the moisture um, on the nuts used because it actually cleans the almonds. And I know I didn't send you this picture yesterday, but possibly I can send you this today, and it'll give you um, a difference in the look of what the control sample versus the pasteurized sample looks like. Um, definitely a cleaner nut, but still the same taste, which is very important to the almond industry, that the nut doesn't um, have any adulteration as far as the taste for the consumer. Very good summary, Pamela. Let me ask you, can you summarize our discussion today about Salmonella, E. coli, Listeria, yeast and molds, FFA, POV, aflatoxin in almonds and walnuts production? And at the same time, let our listening audience of 72,000 listeners know about your particular practice, the products you offer, and the services that you've rendered since 2006. Thank you, Andy, for this opportunity to share a little bit about what I do. And I really appreciate this with your listening audience. Anyone is welcome to go to my website, trackmycrop.com, T-R-A-C-K-M-Y-C-R-O-P. And there they're going to find the links to Scoring Ag, Advanced Traceability Solutions, um, Verifact. And these are all companies that are putting at the base of these processors and growers and shippers putting their need first for a very inexpensive fee. And that's the reason I like working with them is because they're looking out for the best interests of the company paying the price. And I feel that that is the most astute thing that I can do as a, as a consultant is to offer a cost-effective measure, but also bringing the food safety aspect into it. So with, with any of the steps or the processes, they're going to see a return on investment as far as saving, time savings, um, cost savings, as far as seeing where their inputs are going in a field. Everything with the traceability solutions shows a date and time stamp on each label. Um, farmers are able to get not only information as far as how much a tonnage is coming out of a field, but they're also going to be able to see exactly in the field where that's happening because each label is GPS location on that label. So it'll show where that happens exactly in the field. It can be overlaid with a map, and they'll be able to see what their yields are in a small, small way and be able to see how efficient they're being in their production processes. But also at the processing level, Processors will be able to capitalize on seeing exactly how much um, volume is going through a process at a certain time. They'll be able to reduce their their waste and improve their inputs and what's coming out of the facility. Very good, Pamela. I believe that you have provided our audience with the latest information on these topics. Would you like to summarize anything else in our discussion today? You know, I, I just I just really want to urge everyone, you know, with the Food Safety Modernization Act, it's so important to be ahead of the game. I was speaking with a gentleman the other day and they were involved in a recall and they had seven people in their facility um, from USDA to their local state agency 
and the local county agency. And, you know, serving people in your facility with a cost of probably, you know, $200 and whatever cents, you know, per person per hour, you know, I can definitely offer a solution for electronic record keeping to the customer in addition to um, showing a return on their investment immediately with um, the labeling and barcoding and scanning. We have clients that have actually um, increased their sales because they're able to go back to the field and show exactly where product is coming from. And with fresh fruits and vegetables and to be able to even show who's doing that harvesting on each label is so important. And grocery stores are, are expecting that. Consumers are asking for it. So I feel that, you know, now is the time to get on board and save yourself a lot of headaches down the road and just to do your electronic record keeping, begin it now. The sooner you begin it, the less painful it's going to be. And we don't see any stopping what SOSMA began, the Food Safety Modernization Act. And we just see things moving forward. And I'd like to urge everyone in your audience, if they haven't made comments on the produce safety rule, to please take the time to go to the um, USA, US, um, gov page and go ahead and do that. And I, today I was on the site and there was only 471 comments made. And I think that's atrocious that every farmer that is actually involved in production agriculture, every processor, every packer, every shipper, every trucker, this affects everyone in the whole supply chain. So it's definitely something that you need to get on board and make your comments, share with them how it's going to impact your business and what, what expenses you're going to incur because unless you speak up now, you're just going to be mandated later. Thank you. Well, thank you so much, Pam, for your contributions, and I wish you the best in your practice. I can feel the positive energy that you provide for your clients, and it is also my sincere hope that all food production, food quality, food safety, and food security managers prepare for the new regulations coming, particularly those involved in almonds and walnuts. Thank you very much, Andy. Thank you, Pam. Have a great day. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.